Welcome to my blog of skills versus capacities in the weight room. I will analyse two athletes performing a squat and a clean and identify their limitations in terms of skills or capacities. So a skill is defined as a motor control with an issue linked to exercise understanding or the visual representation of the movement and has an ability to be coached. In terms of capacity, it's a quantifiable limitation which is force, mobility, etc and cannot be resolved through only coaching. Athlete number one is a current professional football player and will be performing a back squat with a capacity issue in this video. As the athlete descends, you can see that the knees collapse inwards, resulting in knee valgus. The knees are meant to fall out along the line of the big toe as the athlete descends, which is clearly not apparent in the video. The athlete moves predominantly in the sagittal plane. From the side profile, we can see how the athlete struggles get into parallel. The femur is meant to break parallel with the floor, which is clearly not apparent with this, although the angle of the back does remain constant. When testing ankle mobility, we can see the knee does fall out along the line of the big toe. As you can see. However, when using a mini band, it's clear to see that the athlete struggles in terms of potential glute strength as the knee still falls inwards. The athlete was cued to push his knees out to see if he could keep up with the demand of the squat, clearly showing this is a capacity issue. So it's clear that athlete one has a capacity issue in terms of the back squat. We can improve glute strength to reduce knee valgus and exercises such as hip thrusts. Hip mobility also needs to be improved for squat depth so that we break below parallel. The use of mini bands can be used for muscle memory, cueing knees out. Athlete number two is also a current professional football player who is 21 years old with a skill issue in terms of the back squat. As athlete two descends, we can see that the trunk collapses with the chest not being visible from the front and the head pointing down. An upper body posture is not maintained throughout the descent and ascent of the lift. The side profile also highlights an exaggerated hip flexion with the chest pointing down to the ground Depth is also an issue with this athlete at this point in time. We can also observe that tempo is not slow and controlled. To identify if this is a skill or capacity issue, the athlete performs an overhead squat. We can clearly see that knees are pointing out along the line of the big toe. With this movement, a neutral spine position is achieved with the chest visible from the front and the head up. The side profile confirms this. With squat depth also improved, breaking parallel, the back is now in a neutral position. The hip angle has increased from 46 to 55 degrees, which clearly shows that the trunk is not collapsing. The bar is now behind the athlete's knees. Repeating the back squat with the barbell, we can now see that the angle that was mimicked in the overhead squat is also similar here. The barbell is now within the athlete's base of support and there is no collapse of the trunk and the chest is up, the head up and visible from the front. When comparing the two back squats, we can see the difference. The trunk does not collapse. The chest is now visible from the front and simple cues such as weight through the heels and head up has allowed the athlete to perform a more efficient squat. There is now a lot less forward lean with the bar being in the base of support of the athlete in the second image. Athlete two had a skill issue. 
cues such as keeping the spine neutral, chest up and visible from the front, head up, and the weight through the heel of the foot have helped the athlete gain a more efficient back squat. Hip mobility can still be improved for greater squat depth, but the athlete's anthropometrics, this is going to be a challenge. Athlete 1 had a skill issue with the clean, with the bar path and movement pattern as you will now see. As the athlete performs the clean, we can see several issues. First, being in the start position, his scapula is not pulled back and down, which has allowed the back to not be in a neutral position and more of a curved shape. Hips are higher than knees, and the bar is close to the shins at this point, however the chest is not visible from the front. When looking at the bar path in slow motion, we see the bar does travel slightly backwards in the first pull and obtain that S shape, although minimal. The issue is in the start position, with the athlete not pulling his scapula back and down so that the chest is visible from the front. In the first pull, the angle of torso does remain constant. In the second pull, the knees do re-bend under the bar. We can see as highlighted that the bar path does travel slightly backwards. From behind, we can see as the athlete catches, stance does slightly widen to allow for this greater depth of catch. This will be useful as more weight gets put onto the bar. With the use of bumper plates and extra load on the bar, the athlete can now achieve a neutral back position. The scapula is pulled back and down and the chest is visible from the front with the arms straight and the hips higher than knees initiating in the first pull. For athlete one there's a skill issue. Once the athlete knew to pull himself into the bar, tie snow muscles and breathe in and brace, the scapula was then pulled back and down and the neutral back position was achieved. For the first pull allow the bar to travel up and slightly backwards and close to the shins. For athlete 2, there was a capacity issue with the clean. The latissimus dorsi range of motion and the wrist mobility are the main factors. As the athlete is new to the movement, there is a clear skill and capacity issue. However, mainly the capacity issue in terms of the catch. The elbows in this catch position should be pointing forward at 90 degrees. The red line indicates 90 degrees and the yellow line indicates where the elbow is finished. It is clear the athlete can physically not get the bar to rest on the anterior deltoids. There is also poor triple extension as the hips do not fully extend to meet the bar, forcing the bar upwards. When looking at the athlete's bar path, we can see that the bar travels forward instead of slightly backwards. The hips at this point and the knees are not fully extended. In the catch position again, we can highlight the tight latissimus dorsi on triceps, meaning the elbows are not pointing forward at 90 degrees. We can see that the athlete does split his legs to allow for a greater depth of catch. It must be noted that with more weight on the bar, the athlete may be able to get his elbows through. However, as skill is poor as well, the addition of more weight could re result in injuries. On assessing the lap tightness, we can see that the athlete struggles to push himself into the bench and pull the dowel towards him. This indicates that there is a clear capacity issue and tightness within triceps and lats. Exercises such as pull-ups with a slow eccentric lengthening on the way down can help with lat stiffness and tricep stiffness, which will in turn improve the elbows pointing forward in the catch. So for athlete 2 there is the capacity issue. The aim is to reduce latissimus dorsi stiffness, reduce tricep stiffness through the exercises labelled. To help with the capacity, the athlete can also do front squat bar holds and increase wrist mobility through wrist flexor stretches like the picture shows. In conclusion, skill and capacity issues are often combined and they progress together. New skills will be limited by the new capacity limitations. Improved capacities will allow for the development of new skills. However, it's important to prioritise and work on elements individually.